we had one generation where where the main language was of course Māori so so te reo Māori um, so the protocols um, customs and protocols were, were like a way of keeping things in balance and check so what kind of happened is those were instilled in, in say for example my grandfather and his generation um, what happened then was there were laws within New Zealand where Māori wasn't to be spoken at schools and stuff like that so a lot of the my father's generations were, were wrapped over the fingers for speaking Māori so a lot of them stopped speaking Māori and did mainstream education which were typical subjects like English, geography, history, um, mathematics. When we went to Marais, that's when my parents spoke Māori. They never spoke Māori at home. Yeah, well, even we, we were very shocked to hear them speak Māori. We go, whoa, they can speak Māori. Yeah, yeah very shocked. Never ever spoke Māori at home. That system was probably in place right up to, I would say, uh, probably around about the late 80s, sort of the mid 80s and the late 80s where there was a resurgence and it probably started at the Kohanga Reo movement which is like the language nest movement and from there there were a whole lot of um, babies that were speaking Te Reo, who were speaking the language and so from there um, they just built on that and from there became what we call um, uh, uh, Kura Papa, which is totally immersion Māori language schools. So the curriculum was taught in Te Reo Māori so what you find now is there's a generation of younger, younger, younger kids from the age of five to probably 30 now that were brought through those language institutions. So what they are is they are very, very prolific in um, Te Reo Māori, uh, Māori customs, Māori, Māori protocols.